What's up everyone? This is Brad from iBuyPower and today I want to go over a short video going through some of the maintenance tips and tricks for your Element CL custom liquid cooled system. As with all of these how-to videos, we recommend watching the entire video through uh, from beginning to end before you start with any of these procedures. When you first receive your Element CL system, lie the box flat on the ground and cut the tape to open the top. Element CL lies flat on its side in the packaging to help protect it during transit. The system does weigh about 40 pounds, uh, so if you're unable to lift the computer out of the box on your own, we recommend tilting the box onto its side and sliding the computer out. Start by removing one of the foam ends, then turn the computer upside down and remove the other. Then pull the computer out of the plastic bag. Inspect the bag for any signs of leaked coolant. If you find any liquid spots in and around the uh, system bag, stop the unboxing immediately and give our support a call. If at any time during the unboxing procedure, you come into contact with any coolant, uh, stop the unboxing immediately, make sure the area is clear of any children or pets, um, and wash any of the affected areas with soap and water. Coolant can contain ethylene glycol, which can be harmful or fatal if swallowed. Short-term contact with bare skin or inhalation of a little bit of fumes shouldn't cause any major issues, but refer to the CDC guidelines on ethylene glycol. Assuming your system is clean and dry, uh, remove the thumb screw at the back of the side panel and pull on the tab to open the glass. Remove the three protective foam blocks from the inside of your system and set them aside. It is recommended, at least for now, to hold on to all the packaging material until everything is up and working. Inspect the inside of the system for any signs of leaks. Dried coolant should have an obvious sticky, oily residue that it leaves behind. If you don't see any of that, you're good and can proceed to hooking up the system. As always, make sure to plug your video cables into your graphics card, as some systems may ship with integrated graphics, which would be disabled. On the first power on, you'll probably notice some bubbles circulating through the system and creating some noise. With subsequent power off and on cycles, these bubbles should dissipate and the noise will settle as well. We have included a flow meter on the front panel to make sure you know that coolant is still flowing. There are no other special steps to set up for the Element CL. You can treat it like a normal desktop as it is pre-filled and pre-tested. For Element CL, there are a few major types of maintenance that you should be aware of. The most regular required maintenance will be keeping the dust filters free of dust. How often you need to do this depends on your environment, but we recommend checking the filters about once every month. There are three important dust filters on the Element CL. The first one is easy to find. It is magnetically attached to the top of the case. There should not be a lot of dust collecting here as there isn't a lot of airflow into the case from this zone. The second is the bottom dust filter. This is accessed through the rear of the machine. This filter is important to keep clean because it covers the intake for the power supply. The third filter is behind the metal side panel. This filter is also very important as it covers the intake for the radiator. You may also need to do periodic maintenance on the coolant in the system. The signs that maintenance is required are easy to see. First, you want to watch the fluid level in the front panel. Over time, fluid will naturally evaporate out of the system and this level will drop. The rate that that happens, again, depends on a lot of different conditions. Once the fluid drops below a certain level, air bubbles will start to form in the system again, which is not optimal for cooling performance. The coolant level can drop safely to about the halfway point on the front panel before any major adverse effects on the system. However, you will notice a lot more bubbles and there will be more noise. If the coolant level drops, it simply needs to be topped off with distilled water, which can be purchased from a local grocery store. Another sign that coolant maintenance is needed is if the coolant appears to become cloudy or you start to notice little particles circling around. In this case, the coolant needs to be fully flushed and replaced. For that procedure, you will need both distilled water and new coolant. We will now cover the draining and refilling procedure. If you are just topping off the system with distilled water, you can skip straight to the filling procedure. Before doing any coolant maintenance, make sure to bring the system to a place where you can get coolant onto surfaces without causing any damage. It is very difficult to perform this procedure without a little bit of coolant, you know, getting out and around the system. It is advisable to place the system on a tabletop covered by either a plastic sheet or some old newspaper to catch drips. Again, make sure the area is well ventilated and clear of any children or pets. Prepare the following tools beforehand. A gallon of distilled water, a liter of replacement coolant or around 100 milliliters of coolant concentrate, a Phillips head screwdriver, a five millimeter Allen key, a squeezable wash bottle, a container significantly larger than one liter to catch coolant, plenty of rags or paper towels, and optionally, some rubber gloves and a funnel. 
For replacement coolant, iBuyPower recommends coolant designed specifically for use in systems with aluminum blocks and radiators. EK Cryofuel Clear is one such coolant that is easy to find and design for systems like this. Remember that concentrate needs to be mixed with distilled water in whatever ratio prescribed by the product. Start by removing all the panels from the system and unclipping the front panel by pressing on the small plastic tabs on the inside of the front of the case. Set these panels somewhere safe. It is recommended at this time to unplug all storage devices that the computer may boot to, as you will be powering the machine off and on repeatedly during this process. If you are unable to remove storage, then it is recommended that you bring along a mouse, keyboard, and monitor so that you can safely get the system either into BIOS or shut it down when you need to turn it off. Bring your system to the edge of the table so that the front panel just barely hangs off, but the feet are still securely on your surface. Place your catch container underneath the front edge of the system so that when coolant falls, it will fall into this container. Alternatively, you can have another person help you and hold a funnel under the drain port and spout that into a container of one liter or larger. Use your Allen key to start unscrewing the drain plug. It is normal for coolant to start dribbling out around the edges of the plug. In some cases, it may be difficult to catch the drain plug as it falls out from the front of the system. This is fine, you can retrieve it from your funnel or your catch container at a later time. As the fluid starts to drain, use your Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the breather screw on the top of the front panel. This will assist fluid in flowing out of the system. After the fluid has fully drained, remember to replace all the port covers and tighten them. Pour your coolant into a sealed container and set it aside somewhere safe. If an excessive amount of coolant has spilled onto any surfaces, this is now the time to take to clean that up before you proceed to the next step. For the first refill, iBuyPower recommends flushing the system with distilled water before adding coolant. If you are just topping the system off, you do not need to flush the system, simply add distilled water to the top. Use your five millimeter Allen key to open the fill port and a Phillips head screwdriver to open the breather valve. Using your squeeze bottle, fill the system with distilled water until the fluid level reaches the top of the distribution plate. Replace both the breather screw and the fill port and tighten. Never run the system with any of the ports open. Only fill when the system is off and make sure all the ports are closed and tight before running the system again. At this time, plug your system back in and turn it on to run the pump. Allow the water to circulate for a few minutes. There will be a lot of bubbles since the system is not fully filled. This is fine. After running the system for a few minutes, power the system back off again and observe the clarity of the fluid. If the water seems very clear, then you can proceed to filling with coolant. If it seems cloudy still, you're gonna to wanna to repeat the drain and refill procedure with distilled water again. Once you are ready to begin the final coolant fill, remember to tighten the drain port fully as you will be leaving it sealed from this point forward. The tightness spec is only hand tight. Remember not to over tighten it because you may damage the threads. This time, repeat the same filling procedure, but with the coolant instead. Fill the coolant up to the top of the distribution panel, close all the ports, and then run it again. After running for a few seconds, the fluid level in the front panel will drop. Go ahead and power it off, and then open the fill port again. We will now begin bleeding the system to get rid of all of the air bubbles. After the initial fill, do not open the breather valve again, only use the fill port to access the coolant in the system. Open the fill port and fill again, then close it, run the system and check for air bubbles. And repeat this procedure until there are almost no air bubbles left coming through the front panel. Allow the system to run for several minutes between fills and also allow it to sit off for several minutes between fills. When you are satisfied that all the air bubbles are out of the system, you can go ahead and tighten that fill port and begin putting the system back together. Well, that's it for the coolant filling procedure. Uh, once you're done, you can go ahead and place the system back in its intended spot and start cleaning up your area. Again, any place that may have gotten coolant on it, make sure to clean with soap and water uh, and make sure to dispose of coolant properly. If you're not sure of where to dispose of your coolant, you can usually take it to a local auto shop since the coolant's makeup is basically the same as car antifreeze and they'll usually be able to take it from you. And that concludes our unboxing and maintenance video for the Element CL. If you have any questions or you felt we left something out, make sure to hit us up on social media, leave a comment on this video, get in touch with us somehow. Thank you.